These, now these are pretty cool, evolutions. We all love them, but these, <laughs> now these are, uh, these are bugs. These are bugs. We're sculpting bugs. All right, two months ago, I asked you guys what Pokemon fusions you would want to see me sculpt the most, and evolutions by and large had democracy in a chokehold. So as a woman of the people, I really had no choice. So let's just jump right in, and the first thing on our to-do list is the base, or at least for now, part of it. Before starting, I looked at a bunch of Pokemon sculptures for inspiration, and it taught me two things. One, I'm broke. <laughs> and two, the thing that's very consistent about sculptures with some or all of the evolutions is they have a very dynamic base so I'm gonna start a portion of that first so I can make sure the evolutions we do sculpt end up actually fitting on the base and the project as a whole doesn't get too big. Now since these evolutions are bugs, my first idea was a dark forest spread, maybe having them sit on some dead tree stumps. Once that idea was cemented in my head and never leaving, I added some wire to the base and covered it in aluminum foil. I busted out a block of clay from its plastic prison and smeared on some bacon bond to the foil to help the clay stick. Now, uh, you can just you can just imagine me smoothing it out until it looked like this, but with the form in place, I added two more stumps with pretty much the same process. I didn't add any wire to the stumps because my plan was to have the roots drape over the base to make it seem more natural, and I figured that would also make the stumps strong enough. I got them looking spiffy as a cylinder, and from there, I could start adding those roots. I wanted to make it look pretty natural, so all of the roots are different sizes and heights, and I made sure to add knots here and there. And then I realized if there were two dehydrated dead tree stumps in some random neck of Eterna Forest that they'd probably have cracks on them, so I added some to the tops of the stumps. Now the shape is really coming together at this point, and it's time for some texture. Wooden texture was far more intimidating to think about than to do. I thought it would be way harder to get it to look right, but then I just I just started drawing lines and adding cracks at the top as I went. And you know what? It worked out pretty dang good, so you know, just don't think and it'll probably work out. <laughs> Horrible advice aside, it was also incredibly satisfying to knife through soft clay repeatedly, so just enjoy this for a moment. All right, that's enough enjoyment out of you. Now, once I textured the two stumps at the bottom, I realized I had to add some noodles of clay to the big tree so it looked more like a tree and less like a trunk, uh, of an elephant, that is. I did that, smoothed it out just enough, and did the same texture all over. Once the texture was on, I began adding some branches to the tree as well as a longer offshoot on one of the stumps. You'll see why I did this later, but all you need to know for now is that it's there and it's getting textured in the exact same way. Now, of course, trees are just as unique on the outside as they are on the inside, just like you. So we're gonna be carving in the rings of the stumps and branches. I'm starting with a little help from my friend, a, a broken paintbrush, and then using one of my metal tools to carve in all the rest. Luckily for me, the rings don't have to be perfect. In fact, it would probably look really weird if they were all perfectly circular. Maybe I could hypnotize you into, <laughs> into liking and subscribing. That was the plan all along. Well, now that I've been had, I know you notice all those little crumbs on the side of wherever I carve into, and the fix for that without removing any of the texture we created is brushing over it with some isopropyl alcohol. So I give the whole thing a good brushing to smooth out the texture and remove those crumbs. Now it was definitely shaping up well, I don't get me wrong, it looks good, but something was missing for me, so I ended up deciding to add some bark that overlaps with the top of the stumps. These are just strips of clay that I pre-textured and cut to fit around each stump. Sometimes I overlap them, and I did this for every exposed part of the trees. Then I blended them in and brushed them with some isopropyl alcohol. Thank you. 
And with all of those details carved on, it's finally time to bake it to save our progress. It is looking great so far. Of course, we're gonna add more details so the rest of the wood is covered, but in the interim, it's a perfect size template for me to work with. Now that we've done that, we can start sculpting the evolutions themselves. Now, I did not design these myself. I'm using designs from the very talented fan-made pixel art of Pokemon Fusion. Here are the original artists for the designs I'm using for this sculpture. I will link them all in the description, as well as a link to the Fusion decks, which I highly encourage you to go browse. Not only did a bunch of fans come together to make new sprites for the Pokemon we all know and love, but if you click on anyone, I'll choose Charizard just for the example, obviously you can check out your own favorites, you can see all the other cool sprites they made along with all of these incredible fusions. Sorry to ramble for a bit, obviously this isn't sponsored or anything, I just love the hard work and creativity that goes into stuff like this, so I highly recommend you go check it out. And bonus, if you see any you would like me to sculpt, definitely comment them down below because I'm always on the lookout for a good fusion. Alright, back to the craft. We are gonna start at the beginning of the evolution line and I'm gonna mix up some leftover clay to get the right color for the body. Now spoiler warning, I've never sculpted an Eevee-like creature before so you will be seeing me make a lot of mistakes, but also progressively getting better at sculpting them as time goes on. My plan for this little bug boy is to sculpt him sitting down so I figured the armature didn't need any legs. I slowly built up a thumb-esque shape and trimmed it down a bit before adding legs and arms. Because Eevee is sitting down, these were pretty simple to add and while blending them in, I adjusted with clay here and there whenever I felt things looked a little bit off. I rolled up four forbidden tic tacs of clay and smushed them down a bit and used those as the paws. I separated the toe beans and started working on shaping the tail. Once it looked like a 3D comma, I stuck it on the end of the armature and trimmed away at it until it looked about right. Alright, so now we have a body to work off of, and before we can start the big old bug head that Eevee has, we have to add the neck scruff. Eevee was blessed with an adorable flowing mane, and I would like to do it justice, so the first thing I did was get the general shape on and slowly segment it into smaller and smaller portions. As I went along, I smoothed the mane with some alcohol because this white clay is very soft. Once I felt like I had enough little sections, I could add smaller wisps of fur that made it feel more natural to me. I added those and blended them in as best I could. Good. Now with absolutely no impending doom on the horizon, I could add the head, right? This was the first mistake, because I didn't take into account that Eevee has the world's shortest neck. I ended up making the mane too luxurious, so I had to hack away at it until I could add the head without it looking freaky. I also ended up making Eevee's body a bit shorter while I was doing the major remodeling, so that happened too. But at this point, I at least knew how to do Eevee's body parts, so it was really just redoing my work, but like 30% smaller. I smoothed everything out as I went, and I didn't 100% finish the mane before I added the head because I didn't want the same problem to happen again. So before we can finish that, I'm gonna work on Eevee's big old bug head. I added a nose line into an oval and used my tools to adjust it until it fit right on the face. I pre-baked some yellow ovals that I'll be using as eyes and I figured out their exact placement on Eevee's head. Now I'm just using these so I can outline where to carve out the blue clay. Once I trace them on, I use an X-Acto knife to cut out a nice hunk of clay and replace it with the pre-baked eyes. I popped those suckers in and then I could add some eyelids. The next part is probably the most important part and that is Heracross's beetle of uh, ant antler. Antler? Any entomologist, uh, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, but for that I made a little wire support that I delicately shove into Eevee's forehead. From there I use a bit of bacon bond to make sure the clay will stick without problems and work my way to cover up all the wire. Now, really all that's left for Eevee at this point is his little antennae and <laughs> restoring his mane to its prior glory. For his antennae, I'm just covering up the wire for now, but for his mane, I'm rolling up little noodles of clay and slowly adding to it wherever I think it needs some volume. Now, you can kind of see how much better it looks side by side where this right side is voluminous and ready for a L'Oreal commercial and the other side falls a bit flat. So once I get all the hair in the right place, I use some acetone to blend it all together and remove any gaps. I 
add his nose and mouth and carve in the place on his tail which will eventually be painted white. Then I carve in Heracross's face plate looking detail thing and bake him before adding the final step which is the little ball at the top of each antennae. I wanted to bake him first to save all the progress we've made and I didn't want to mess up the stem of the antennae. But with that we can put them aside for a little bit and start working on our next evolution fusion, Leafeon and Butterfree. Now I'm god awful at making armatures for four legged creatures so I'm glossing over my whole struggle with that and moving straight to the sculpting. After mixing up a bright purple and having a bit too much fun squishing it around, I cover the center of the armature with a little sausage of clay. Leafeon will be standing up so I add the legs going from top to bottom. As I go along I make sure the armature is covered and slowly start shaping Leafeon's midriff with my tools. Once I'm somewhat satisfied with the general body shape, I add some paws, blend those in, and attach a circle of clay above the arms to be the neck. Now Leafeon was looking a bit skinny, so I added some more clay. This is foreshadowing by the way, but I digress. Next up is Leafeon's head. I pop a ball onto some wire and stick that- oh, sorry, my bad, sorry- and stick that into Leafeon's neck. I blend it all together, my heart brimming with joy, only to realize that I have goofed up. You see, at this point, I had been sculpting Leafeon independently. So upon finally comparing sizes between bigger, evolved Eevee and Eevee, it was nowhere near the size difference that it should have been. I mean, Eevee was almost bigger in every way compared to Leafeon. So basically, I made the exact opposite mistake that I did with Eevee, and now I needed to make it about 30% bigger. On the bright side, it was a lot easier to add than subtract, but I just find the fact that I made mistakes on both ends of the spectrum, one after another, to be hilarious. With my renewed hope and properly sized Leafeon, I began reworking its head. The last head I did was uh, but this head would turn out to be a lot more accurate. I started by cutting a ball of clay at the bottom and smoothing out the edges. I stuck that on the armature and used the rest of the ball as the top of the head. I blended them both together and then blended the head to the neck. And with that done, it's actually shaping up quite nicely. It looks very Leafeon-esque, which is a good sign for us. Now that the head is the right shape, it's time to work on Leafeon's face. Much like Eevee, I'm going to be pre-baking the eyes, so I mixed up the right color and made two half ovals. And when they came out of the oven, I traced them where I wanted them to go and removed the clay with an X-Acto knife. Just like I did with Eevee, I added eyelids, but Leafeon took me a bit longer to get right and I'm not sure why. I think my hands have a natural disposition to make something that looks angry, but that's just a theory. A game theory. Alright, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> And after finishing the eyes, I get to work on the big wisps of hair on top of its head, so I roll up three cones and blend those in. Now at this point, we pretty much have most of Leafeon's general body covered, so it's time to start working on the extremities, starting with the ears. Now you'll never guess this, but the Pokemon named after a leaf has leaf-shaped ears. So I'm gonna shape them, smooth them, and cut them until I get the right thickness and shape. Thank you. 
And once I have the front side of the ear secured onto the wire that I stuck into Leafeon's head, sorry about that, I attach the back side of the ear, trim away any excess, and blend it all to perfection. And next up we have the tail, which is very easy. I started by bending the wire into the shape I wanted the tail to be in, and then I just made a template out of parchment paper that I cut two clay copies out of. I sandwiched both cutouts on each side of the wire, cut away the excess, and blended the two sides together. And next up are all the little wisps of hair that Leafeon has on the back of its neck, its chest, and its arms and legs. I used wire in the center of these at first because they seemed small and delicate so I wanted to make them stronger, but the wire ended up getting in the way when I was smoothing them so I eventually took the wire out. Once those were on, I could finally start cutting away at little sections of the ears and tail. And finally, we could add the veins to the leafy body parts we just put on. These are just super thin noodles of clay that I pressed into both sides of the tail and ears. I blended them together, used some alcohol to smooth them out a bit more, and once I had that on, we officially had a Leafeon. But we aren't sculpting just a Leafeon. Since this Leafeon is fused with I can't believe it's not butter, it needs a glorious pair of butterfly wings. To make these, I rolled out a thin sheet of white clay, used another template I made out of parchment paper, and cut out four sections. Once I baked them, I gave them all a good sand. I wanted to soften the edges a bit, and the parchment paper I put them on kind of left a wrinkly texture on them, and you can see the sanded wing on the left looks way better in comparison. So once you've successfully constructed Navi the Fairy from Ocarina of Time, it's time to paint the wings. I'm leaving most of the paint job until the end of the video, but since these are being stuck into Leafeon, it'll be easier to paint them now. And after painting all four sections on both sides, I baked them in pairs so they would be stuck together like this, and this would make it a lot easier to transplant into Leafeon. To attach them, I cut out a section from Leafeon's abdomen and put the wings in that. Then I used the clay I cut out to patch up any areas that didn't join up with the wings. Now this next part, much like the faceplate that I carved into Eevee, wasn't in the original design, but because it's in 3D, it kind of felt like something was missing where the wings meet the body, so I decided to add more more fur around the wings. I figured Leafeon already has a bunch of fur all around, so it wouldn't look too unnatural. Since all the clay was still soft, I added some supports under the wings just to ensure that they stay in place, and once those were in place, I pressed in some toes and added the almost question mark on Leafeon's forehead with some pre-baked clay. I added some antennae by just coating thin wire and blending it into Leafeon's forehead. And the last thing to complete our second fusion is an adorable nose. On to the fusion finale. We have have the one I'm most excited for and purposefully left until the end, Sylveon and Ariados. For the armature, I did the same thing I did for Leafeon, only I made it a bit longer to accommodate the extra pair of arms that this spider evolution has, and then I began covering up the armature with the rough body shape. Now the reason I wanted to do this one last is because I felt like I needed at least two Eevees under my belt in order to do this amazing design justice, and boy am I glad I waited. I'd say the most challenging part for me personally was figuring out how each shoulder interacted with each other, but ever since I became EV certified, it wasn't too hard. I posed the armature so that you'd be able to see all six legs from the front, and I took my time refining Sylveon's body until it looked right. Along the way, I fixed issues like the bowing of this leg that looked fine from one angle but very odd from another, and once all the legs looked good from every conceivable angle, I rolled out six clay tic tacs and attached them to the front of each leg, blending and adjusting as I went. I smoothed out Sylveon's body with some alcohol and added a lot of toes. Thank you. 
and once that was done, I added a neck and blended that in. Up next is Sylveon's head, and I'm doing the uh, cut up sphere technique that I used for Leafeon again. And just a heads up, I make major changes to Sylveon's face, so don't worry if it looks a bit weird. Until then though, it's time to give this spider Eevee a cute little stinger. I added some wire and stuck a cone right onto it. I blended it in and began working on the eyes and ears. Now I made the eyes in the same way as I did the last two, but Sylveon's ears are quite unique, so we'll focus on those for now. First, I baked an outline that I'll use as the middle layer. Basically on the backside, I just added a good hump of clay on it and rounded it out as best I could. For the front, I defined the ear hole thing first and then added enough clay until both sides blended together seamlessly. By the time the ears were finished, the eyes were out of the oven all baked, so I carved out space for them and started adding some clay around them to blend them in. Now, it was at this point that I took a long look at Sylveon's face and realized that is not Sylveon's face. So I spent a good amount of time adding clay to Sylveon's head to make the face look less like an alien. Once it looked less like E.T. and more like Eevee, I could attach the ears with some wire and bacon bond. The ears also have a little bump on the side, so I added that and started blending the two areas together so it looked more natural. Once that was done, I pre-baked some white clay to act as the horn from Ariados, as well as some curved cones to act as the little spider chompers. Before I attached the teeth, I added a little nose and did my best smoothing out Sylveon's body so it would be ready for the first bake. So with the general body done, and uh, I, I did spill some alcohol on, on one of the eyes, but that's okay, we're gonna paint it later. It was time to tackle the ribbons. This was the part I was a bit scared of, just cause it seemed like it would be kinda complicated, but honestly, it was pretty easy. Both sets of ribbons are coming out of Sylveon's bows, so I made two cute little bows first, and I poked holes where the ribbons would eventually be attached. I started measuring and shaping the wire, which would support the ribbons, and I did this cause I didn't want the ribbon to look stagnant, so I really took my time finding the best placement for them. To make them, I sandwiched two strips of clay over the wire and blended the seams. When it came out of the oven, it was lumpy and weird, but I predicted this, so I grabbed a piece of sandpaper and sanded the ribbons down so they looked a lot more clean. Now, usually when you sand colored clay, at least in my experience, it usually discolors it a lot, but for some reason, this yellow is fine. Maybe it was just based and, and yellow pilled. Anyway, I'm gonna cut triangles out at the end, finish sanding, and wipe all the clay clay dust off. Now once the raw ribbons were ready, I tried it on for a fitting and it looked great. The next step was attaching it to the bows and blending those together. As of now, it wasn't time to truly connect them until I got the ribbons painted in the yellow and purple stripes, as well as painting the middle of the bows a very dark gray. I drew on where I wanted the stripes with a pencil and began painting several coats of purple. Once the ribbons and the inside of the ears were painted, I secured them in their place, blended them in, and added any last minute details. Mm -hmm. 
On that note, the construction of all of our bug evolutions has officially concluded, and now it's time to add the rest of the details with some paint. Going back to the beginning, Evie is first up and has a relatively simple paint job. The first thing I do is paint the tip of its tail, as well as its mane, a bright white. Then the eyes were looking a bit too dull for me, so I decided to paint over it in a more saturated yellow. Then came the nightmare of drawing on a perfect pupil, and while it didn't end up entirely perfect, it did end up passable, and that is good enough. Enough. I painted the nose a slightly darker shade of blue, and as a final touch, I added a thin layer of resin over the eyes. Next up on the painting block is Leafeon, and this paint job is a little more complex than the last one. Firstly, I mix up the right color, which took me a little bit to find that perfect shade, but when I did, I made a separate pot of a lighter version of it. Then, starting with the lighter color, I gave several coats to the tail and ears. After the layer of paint was nice and opaque, I went in with the darker color for the top layer, making sure to leave that small portion of the lighter color at the bottom. The almost question mark on Leafeon's forehead got a coat as well as all the little wisps of fur. Now, I wasn't sure at first if I should paint these ones the same as the rest, as I feared it might be too much, but I decided to go through with it, and I'm very happy I did, because I really like how it ended up looking. Leafeon's paws, eyes, and inner ears were all painted in several coats of red. I painted the antennae a darker indigo and tried my best blending it into the lighter purple of the body. I also decided to paint the nose red. In the original design, it's a darker purple, but I don't think I looked at it, so uh, it's red now. And lastly, Leafeon got a nice coat of resin over the eyes. And lastly, on to Sylveon. This paint job was very fun. Ariados has some really cool color combinations, and the original design did an amazing job of utilizing all of them. For Sylveon's legs and tail, we're gonna paint them in enough coats of yellow to persist after the heat death of the universe. And hopefully that's enough to make it look opaque. Once that's done, we're gonna top off those yellow socks with some of the same purple we used on the ribbons. Likewise, this took a lot of coats to get a nice coverage. For Sylveon's body, we're going to be doing some dark gray stripes between each set of legs. Weirdly enough, this Eevee is getting a cutie mark on its hind legs, so to get a perfect circle, I dabbed the end of my X-Acto knife into some paint and stamped it on each side. For the eyes, I painted them a slightly lighter purple than the one I used before, and I added a little arch of a lavender shade and very, very carefully added some pupils before topping it all off with resin. And now it's finally time to finish up that base we put off so long ago. Uh, wait, I, I forgot to paint the nose purple. Okay, now we're actually done painting them, and I can focus up on the base. Before anything else, I'm gonna add some clay to the big tree so Sylveon can stand level on it. I press its paws into some soft clay and texture the soft clay to match the rest of the tree. Now before we cover the top of the exposed wood, we have to cover the sides, and for that, I'm gonna be making some rocks. After I add a bunch of globs of clay to the side, I use an X-Acto knife to cut away at them so they have a lot of flat, rock-like angles on them. Thank you. 
I used some alcohol to blend out any fingerprints left on the rocks, and now it's time for the grass, which will be very simple but tedious. For the grass, I'm cutting out a million bajillion triangles. Here's the general process summed up, I just cut out strips of clay and cut triangles from those strips. I'm not gonna bore you with too much of that because the real satisfying part is watching those triangles fill up the exposed wood. I smeared on a really thin layer of bacon bond to the top just to be sure the triangles were attached properly and got to work covering the top of the base. Once it was all covered in that cartoony looking grass, I baked it and we could finally start painting it. The first to be painted are the rocks on the side, which all got a base coat of dark gray and then dry brushed with progressively lighter shades of the same color. Next up are the trees, which were so satisfying to finally paint. And to start, I'm gonna give them all several coats of a very dark brown. Once they were all covered, it was time to start layering on progressively lighter browns. That dark base will really help the ridges of the bark pop, and all the edges of the stumps will get a bit more attention when we get to the lighter colors. The exposed parts of the stumps would be much lighter than the rest of the tree, so I'm painting over them in a nice shade of brown that really reminds me of iced coffee. To redefine those rings inside the stump that we kind of lost when the paint dried, I mixed up some brown paint with water and painted that over the stumps. Up next is the grass, which we will be painting with a very watery paint at first to ensure that all the cracks and crevices get covered by paint. Then we'll go back in to accurately paint the edges with a tiny brush. And just like the last two components of this base, the grass will be brushed with lighter and lighter shades of green. Once I'm happy with how the grass looks, I'll give a few random areas a brush of a super bright lime green to really accentuate the tips of the grass. Boy. Okay, but actually the base being designed like this did indeed have a purpose, and that purpose is to have a spider web in the middle. Now I thought of making this spider web out of clay, but I figured the best way to mimic thread would be to use thread. So to make this spider web, I'm taping up a couple of strings of thread that I've tied together so they're nice and taut. Then I'm using super glue to glue on the inner sections. Now eventually when it was big enough, I cut most of the strings off except where I wanted to tie them to the base. Now because the maker of this web is an evolution known for having cutesy bows everywhere, I figured it would be a really cute detail to tie off the ends of the spider web with some bows. And all that's left to do now is glue on our bug evolution. so with that, please sit back and enjoy some glorious final shots.
wow, we are already at the end of the video, which means I need to thank my patrons, especially my new DIYers, Charlotte S. and Beefcake, my new crafter, Madison Kava, and my glorious new artificers, Jessica Chidzi and Jacob. Your support continues to humble me as it's absolutely unexpected, but I hope my videos continue to amuse you. On that note, I bid all of you a wonderful evening. If you have any suggestions for my next project, which includes more evolutions, possibly, do leave it in the comments below, and I will catch you later for alligator.